Good day, I'm Carrie Ann Smith and this is your GIS News from Monday, November 9. The cabinet changes announced by Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller last Friday took effect today. The Minister of Health is now Harris Daly. He takes over from Dr. Fenton Ferguson, who now heads the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Derek Kelly, who was in charge of both the Labor and Agriculture Ministries, will continue in his post as Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries. In a broadcast to the nation Sunday night, the Prime Minister said the new Health Minister had been instructed to work quickly to correct the shortcomings in the health sector. He has served as Health Minister before and he knows the system very well. He has assured me that his first order of business will be to strengthen the system of healthcare delivery to eliminate the deaths of babies or adults from causes such as bacterial outbreaks. Mrs. Simpson-Miller also directed Minister Daly, who was formerly in the Finance Ministry, to continue giving oversight to the remaining elements of the public sector wage negotiations. Minister Ferguson will give focus to the government's priority of labour market reforms, while Minister Kelly will continue to anchor the expansion of the agriculture sector. While addressing another function on Friday, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller reiterated her government's zero-tolerance approach to the abuse of children. My government pledges to uphold the rights of our children and to punish severely those who harm or abuse them. Mrs. Simpson-Miller was addressing the 10th anniversary of the Caribbean Child Research Conference on Friday. She urged everyone to care and protect children. I call on all parents, teachers, pastors, community leaders, policymakers, every adult in the society to take care of the nation's children. Do not abuse them. Do not neglect them. We have a moral and ethical responsibility to take good care of them. 106 residents of St. Elizabeth and adjoining parishes are now fully registered land title holders following a lamp and geoland ceremony last Wednesday. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller was on hand to issue the titles and said providing land for landless Jamaicans was a major priority for her administration. She added that she was pleased with the number of senior citizens and other vulnerable applicants now in receipt of land titles as a result of a $90 million grant from the Development Bank of Jamaica. This provides funding to help persons who have applied to LAMP and have made some payments but are unable to make the remainder. I want them to complete that process. So far, 4,590 new titles and 2,746 certificates of title have been regularized. Youth and Culture Minister Lisa Hanna has cautioned the students about their use of social media, which she warns can compromise their safety. Many of you on the road at home become so disconnected and our hashtag for this youth month is I am connected. But the truth is you have disconnected your lives from so many other things that you fail to realize that it becomes a security hazard. The minister was speaking on Friday during a youth forum held at the St. Andrew Parish Church Hall in Kingston. She outlined four tips to increase social media safety. One, turn off the mode on your phone that gives your whereabouts. Do not at home stand up in front of your car or your parents car or someone else's car and show the license plate number. Do not post for those of us who have children don't post the school that they go to. Also for those of you sometimes change up your route. Jamaica has made good on a promise to help hurricane ravage Dominica by shipping off 50 million dollars worth of bridge infrastructure and material. The items, which included two Bailey bridges, six tons of steel and 18 tons of cement, were loaded onto a ship at Puerto Rio Bueno in Trelawney on Wednesday. Jamaica is small, but we can we show the best in all disaster. Because one day, when we have our disaster, we need support from other countries. The $50 million contribution is a partnership involving the government and private sector entities such as Tankweld. And finally, 20 households in the community of Banana Ground in central Manchester are now connected to the national grid. 
The project was undertaken at a cost of $4 million by the National Energy Solution. During last Friday's commissioning ceremony, Energy Minister Philip Paulwell asserted that the provision of electricity was about the development of the people. He reported that 123 communities had been connected since 2011, bringing coverage of rural areas to 97.5%. The global average is 75%, so Jamaica is way above the global average. And we're not going to rest until, as Sister P said to me, every single nook and cranny of Jamaica has electricity. He said the remaining 2.5% would be connected via solar energy. Meanwhile, Member of Parliament and Minister of National Security Peter Bunting said the light would add to the security of the people, especially children coming home from late classes. It is going to improve the security for all the citizens living on the street. And I'm sure all the parents, the mothers, the fathers will feel much better that they'll have a few street lights to help them come in safely from the main. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Carrie Ann Smith. Thank you for watching.